So now that we showed you how to morph this character into shape, we're going to start painting some textures on it. So we're going to use those same photo references and a few additional ones uh, that we showed you before to morph into shape, but this time we're actually going to use that to apply the paint. So here I am positioning it in place, and I'm using the Brush Tiles Setup Wizard again, and um, I push the, uh, the V hot key to show this overlay. This is showing this texture overlaid onto the model. Um, there you go, and we're using uh, are these options here to move and size it into position. Um, here we go, just like we did before. And notice how uh, nicely everything lines up at this point because the the uh, the model has roughly the same shape as the photograph. See, we've got the lips and the eyes and the ears. We're just tweaking it a little bit just to get it right back in the place we want it. And uh, there we are. And now we choose the paintbrush over here. And we're going to select that non culling method again because we want that paint to go straight through the other side. We don't want to just paint this one half. Although we do have symmetry on, there's still little nooks and crannies. We just want that paint to go straight through. And actually, notice here, I'm just pointing out. Let's go back here just for a second. I'm just emphasizing a few things here. Let me get to that. Um, here we go. Number one, I'm just showing you that there's three texture maps. And if you look at uh, one of the previous videos about setting up uh, the Second Life avatar, um, we show us that we have three different texture maps. One for the head, one for the upper body, and one for the lower body. And that's what these three maps are. And at this particular time, they're blank. And we had uh, just, we had cleared them with these faint col colors just to, just to uh, visualize the difference between the two. And anyway, let's continue on with the video. And I also want to show how in the materials here, there's three different materials, one corresponding to each uh, uh, each of the maps. That's just the way that the object was uh, laid out. Um, so in this particular the material head has the head texture map, which we saw over there. And so it, there's two ways of specifying that texture map. You can either drag and drop it from the maps tab onto the material you want. And then when you're prompted, you're saying you want to only apply it to the material. Or you can go into the manager here and then under the materials, select the particular material you want and manually sign it from the drop down list. But anyway, let's continue on. Here we go. And um, again, just showing a few things here. Okay, and notice here we left that, simple, that shiny gray on. So we hit the uh, F3 hotkey or in display modes. Uh, we can have color maps because we want to paint the color maps. There's different types, transparency, bump, etc. We want to paint on the color maps. So here I am painting on through, culling's on none, so that paint's going to go straight through to the entire thing. This white bit here, that's just the edge of the photograph, um, So, but we're going to catch that later when we're painting the back angle. Now look back here, this is what the front looks like because that front is all stretched because we're doing it from a side perspective and this is that stretchy fall off zone. We're going to take care of that in just a second so don't you worry um, and it'll be much easier than you think. Uh, so here we go, I just selected, now I, you can't really see that when I'm drop. I'm going to pause here for a second. Um, just because, again, I've mentioned this before, the video capture program I have, it's really good for doing this type of video for um, for 3D graphics applications. It's really zippy and uh, captures the frame rate nice, but it doesn't show me, uh, or show you rather, it doesn't show you the dialog boxes and dragging a drop of images. So what I did is <clears throat> I took a file from the Windows Explorer or Mac OS Finder, it's all the same, and you drag that file into this box and it shows up here. And this is that, that brush image which you're going to use the paint with, okay? So this is not your texture, your texture map over here, don't get mistaken. This is just what you're going to paint with, okay? So let's, here we go, let's keep going. And now we got that front view. And this is also, I mentioned before, I didn't show you where it was. I just hit the Shift V hotkey to get the brush tile set up. But if you click on the uh, texture box and they click set up, that's another way of getting to this. Hotkeys are faster and zippier, but sometimes you can't always remember what the hotkeys are. So all your texture options are here. So when you click on that, you have a few of these options and you have the setup box. Okay, so let's continue on. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to align to viewports. So I was going to take that same flat plane I had from the side, and it's just going to flip it so it, it's facing forward. Then I'm just going to move it up a bit here just to get it into line. And uh, photographs, uh, these are not perfectly sides, so uh, from one to the next, so we have to do a little bit of size adjustment. And 
and that was really painless as you can see because the model already had the general shape from before so when we have to uh, set these things up again it goes really quickly because um, the eyes and the nose and the lips are all in the relative places so okay here's the trick here is the trick I'm telling you about to get rid of those stretches is a fade by angle okay we see these uh, parameters here you don't have to worry about too much right now because their defaults are pretty good but uh, what this does is it says as you're applying the paint right okay as you go this angle with the viewport increases see something over here is going to be like 90 degrees to the viewport it's normal is going to face this way and coming out of the viewport is is our direction so as this angle increases, right, the paint is going to be applied less and less. So that stuff that would normally get stretched over here is just going to get faded off. So it kind of counteracts the stretching. So since we painted the from the side without this angle, right, and we got all these stretchy parts across here. Let's see where they are again. There we go. All right, these stretchy parts. Now when we put the fade by angle on and we paint this, we're going to paint over this stretchy part, but we're not going to make new stretches on this, these sides because if you didn't do this, you would paint all this the front angle and then you'd go to the side and it's going to look all stretched again. You go back and forth until you're blue in the face. That is why you do one angle with uh, without fade by angle and then you do generally the rest of them, in this case the front and then maybe you'll do the back and the top with fade by angle so you're not doing more stretching, okay? So let's continue on here. So now that we, uh, here we go, now we're just about to apply the paint. And we're just gonna kind of go here. We'll avoid the parts like the, the edges, but I mean, we can still use fade by angle, it'll be all right. But we're just gonna mainly focus on the, the, uh, the front area here. And now let's take a look around. Look at that, look how beautiful this is. I'm gonna pause, all right. This is for, you saw how quick those two steps were, right? There's a, a few reasons why this was this happened so um, so quickly and so beautifully. Uh, number one, these photographs were taken very deliberately to have the exact same exposure between the front and the side, and they have the same lighting. So if you're using uh, just a, you know a standard um, you know home camera which has auto focus and auto uh, levels and so on and so forth, you're not necessarily going to get that. The lighting can be different from picture to picture. This was taken done in a, this was taken in a professional studio, but if you know how to tweak the, the settings on a uh, on an entry level camera, you can still get this kind of effect. You just have to be really careful with the lighting, making sure that it is consistent. So anything that's auto, turn off all auto on your camera and just set everything manually. So uh, when you take the picture in the front, you take it on the side, and um, the, the, the exposure is the same, okay? So let's continue. Oh yes, I had two points to make, so let's go back. The second point, the number one reason was uh, the photographs were of high quality. And number two, it's because we spent all that time morphing this model into shape that when we came down to dropping the paint down, it just happened instantly. Like it, everything just fell into place. Um, we, can, we don't have to morph in the shape, if, but what you end up doing is you end up doing a bit of the eye here, for example, but then the nose doesn't line up. So then you, you sort of shift the uh, the brush image over a bit and then you paint the nose part and then you shift it up and do the lips. You can do that if you want, um, but doing this, uh, morphing it into shape first, painting it second, it really is a very efficient way of doing it. And then if you want a different face shape but the same texture later, you can either unmorph it or you can do additional morphing to change the shape or whatever. Um, but this is a it's a really good strategy and again there's more than one way to skin a cat that's just the strategy that i like to do so here we go and notice this we have this the symmetry on that's why that side is shaded and this back part here is because the photograph actually stopped there that's why we it's kind of cut off but we're going to have another image we're going to um, drop in really shortly another photograph down here show it with the back angle so there it is and often with these models, you end up putting like a, some sort of hair model on top of it. So it's not necessarily too important to, um, to paint the hair textures here. But we're just going to do it for consistency to make everything look fine. Uh, there we go. So again, this is the same sort of thing. We're using the, that, that shift V to get to the brush tile setup. We're, we're moving it uh, and scaling it into place. 
And again, this doesn't have to be perfect at this point because we're just doing a bunch of hair on the back. So it doesn't have to line up perfectly with ears and neck and so on and so forth. And here we go, we're doing it with symmetry, with smart coloring on, we don't have none because we don't want this hair to show up on the front of our face, okay? And um, so we're just doing this a few more times. And I'm just gonna back up here just for half a second because um, I noticed something here that might confuse you. You might get the same thing. See this bit of white that's showing, see this? That's because we have fade by angle on, and this back part is just completely white. Well, if that if we had the hair from this already just kind of stretching over, and then we painted here, we wouldn't notice that one stroke would have been good enough, uh, because it would have faded nicely together. But because that whole back chunk was white, that's where this fading is coming from. So I just compensated for that by doing multiple strokes here, and just letting that paint build up. There we go. And now we're gonna, what are we gonna do? Yeah, I'm gonna turn off symmetry now. And I'm just gonna paint this a few more times just to get it sort of asymmetric so it doesn't look like this perfect mirror image of each other. Nobody's hair is uh, is, is groomed that well, that their uh, the bob on the back of their head is perfectly symmetrical. So um, here we go. Now we're gonna look around, check a few different angles. We know some swirlies at the top here. We're gonna to have to do that as well. And I actually don't have a good photo reference uh, handy for the top of our head. So we're just gonna do a little trick. We're gonna fake it. We're gonna take um, a side angle, but we're gonna do it more on the top. So the photograph is gonna be perfectly from the side, but we're gonna angle this like uh, at a 45 degree um, vertically to get to it. So we see here, this is a, uh, like a totally a side angle but we're gonna line it up and just sort of steal some of that hair. And there we go, exactly what we're doing. And again, remember this V, I'm gonna pause for a second here, just so you know, see this flashing back and forth? That's because I'm hitting the V hotkey to toggle between this view, which is this texture superimposed over the model and the, the actual texture of the model that we're painting. So you just, kind of toggle that back and forth when you're when you're trying to line things up so you can see how the how it goes okay so here we are and applying the paint there it is and we're going to go a few times and there you go all those swirlies have gone away and sometimes well again because we have symmetry on here that's why you kind of get this pattern because it's sort of perfect on both and one thing you often expect on the top of these characters' heads is that sometimes there's this UV region which kind of looks swirly no matter what you do, and that's just because the UVs are heavily stretched up there. So, um, but in this case, I think they're gonna look more sufficient for a real-time model. And again, we're doing the same thing here to get rid of this, and I, right now I'm picking out the appropriate uh, um, uh, angle and uh, reference, and I think I'm gonna do this 45 degree angle texture that I have and it's going to show up right now and again um, this is I'm doing I'm cheating a bit by angling the model a little more than the actual image is, is angled just to get this hair to sort of go on top more and I'm just going to line up a bit and again we're only doing the hairline here so the rest of the face doesn't have to be perfect uh, or even anything close to it And here we go, toggling it a few times. See this toggle? See, that's gold, all right? You just toggle it back and forth, move, toggle, toggle, and you get it lined up just right. And then as you, and you can always, uh, if you find as you start doing this paint stroke, if it's not quite right, you can just undo and then toggle back and forth, move it, and then paint it again. There you go, see this hairline looks much better now. Again, it's a little overly symmetric, but that's okay. You can always touch that up later with, um, uh, by reapplying the front angle of these photographs and a turn symmetry off, and then sort of get some of that asymmetry in the in the uh, in the texture. But there's a lot of subtle details that once you learn all these techniques, you you'll be able to go off yourself and and get the get the texture just the way you want it. 